I'm Steve, this is Blame Man Studios, and you're about to watch the greatest software demonstration of operating system agnostic PC gaming. Let's get into it. Over the last year or so, I've been getting a lot of questions asking me how my computer has changed over the last year, and the answer is not much. Um, I've configured my desktop here to basically match the setup that I did for my laptop and my uh, laptop VFIO how-to video, and so you'll see using two GPUs how I'm able to seamlessly switch back and forth between Windows and Linux. As you can see, my computer is starting up here, and once it starts up, I'm going to start up OBS, I'm going to start recording, um, so let me just log in. And then once it's recording and it's kind of set up, I'll show you how I can run PC games on Linux uh, using Steam, and then how I can quickly shut those down and then start up a Windows VM that can also play video games with the full power of my GPU. So this computer has both a integrated GPU, which is uh, an Intel GPU that's built into my computer's CPU, and I also have a dedicated NVIDIA GPU. So right now what you're seeing is my uh, integrated GPU powering this display. So I can go ahead and uh, open up OBS and um, start recording so that you can see whatever's happening on my screen. Okay, so now we're recording using OBS on my screen. And like I said, everything you're seeing here is using the integrated GPU. So I can open up a terminal just to prove that. And I can run a command alias that I have, which will run, uh, it just says, how's my GPU? And you can see that right now my NVIDIA graphics driver, uh, my NVIDIA graphics card is being used by the VFIO PCI driver, which means essentially the NVIDIA graphics card is not attached to my computer right now. It's just kind of um, stubbed out being ready to pass into a VM. But if I want to run games, on this computer using both Linux and the NVIDIA GPU, I just have to go ahead and enable it. So I have another command alias here, which is NVIDIA enable. It's gonna ask me for pseudo permission so that it can start to run some commands. And uh, now the NVIDIA GPU is attached to our Linux operating system. So it's gonna be attached using prime render offloading, which means the integrated GPU is gonna be powering this full display, but then um, if something needs to use a GPU for computing power, it can do that um, and then show the render frames to the integrated GPU at the end here. So now that we have the NVIDIA GPU attached, I can go ahead and start up Steam and I can open some sort of 3D game that's gonna run with the full computing power of my GPU. So let's give Steam a second to start up here. Okay, so Steam started up. Uh, lately I've been playing a lot of tabletop simulator, but for the purpose of showing that we do have full GPU acceleration, I'm gonna go ahead and start Payday 3, which um, is going to render uh, using my GPU. So as you can see here, the game is starting up and just to let you know on the aspect ratios here, you're probably seeing my widescreen monitor, um, which I like for the purpose of kind of like immersive video games, but also it allows me to have kind of my, my face and the camera over in the corner here. So just pretty quickly, the game's gonna start up and I'll just pop into like a tutorial level or something so you can see that it's, that it's actually working. voice and the game audio is coming through. So let's go ahead and play a tutorial level to the combat tutorial. This is the combat training so you can area. see we're in the game. Mask we can go ahead and mask up and play a GPU accelerated video. 
Another part about having a very useful and usable uh, Linux or gaming computer is making sure that you can chat with your friends or use Discord or anything like that. So I'm also just going to go ahead and demonstrate that I can log into Discord um, and have both my uh, audio coming in from the game and being able to uh, chat with friends or, or whatever it is that you do while you're gaming. So. I can go ahead and open up Discord. I like to open it in my browser so I don't have to have the proprietary Discord client installed on my computer. And then I can just hop in uh, a room here with some of my friends. Hey guys, is my audio working? No. Yes. Okay, awesome, thanks, bye. And so you can see uh, we were able to eavesdrop on my friends, drop in and have them check my audio while I'm also playing a video game here. So um, I will go ahead and exit out of this game and I have already exit, uh, let me finish exiting out of Discord. So I'll exit out of Discord, closing that browser and then uh, let's just go ahead and quit the game here. So now the next part of this that I want to demonstrate is that I can go from having playing a game in Linux and using this computer as a Linux either like gaming workstation or um, using it for programming um, to then playing a video game in Windows for if there's any video game that you want to play that you can't play in uh, that you can't play on Linux. So I'll go ahead and go back to my terminal here and we'll just check which GPU is working. So um, I can run my how's my GPU command and you can see right now the NVIDIA driver is bound to the GPU. Um, so obviously when we were playing that game, the GPU driver was bound and we could play the game, um, but I'll go ahead and detach that. So the command to detach my GPU I have is NVIDIA disable. So same as before, it kind of had my pseudo permissions and it detached the GPU. So now we're back to VFIO mode, which will allow us to pass that gaming GPU into a virtual machine that we can play with um, here on our Linux machine without having to reboot or uh, do anything special or disruptive like that. So I have a Windows 7 gaming VM here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open this up. Here's where the settings are configured. Um, and I can just go ahead and start this VM. As you can see, my mouse froze right as I started the VM. And that's because I'm using um, an EV dev configuration, which passes my mouse back and forth between the VM and, um, and my host operating system. So right now the VM is actually capturing the mouse. And so it, uh, it's also capturing the keyboard, but I have a, um, a kind of a hotkey here so I can press scroll lock and control at the same time. And that's gonna free my mouse up again. So now I'm not using, so now I'm using the mouse here on the host operating system. So this is one of the virtual monitors that's being, that's uh, kind of attached to the VM, but I will just go ahead and minimize that. Uh, and get it out of the way because we don't want that low performance virtual monitor. We want our high performance uh, gaming monitor uh, that has graphics acceleration in our Windows VM. So for that, I have a program called Looking Glass. And so Looking Glass is gonna open up a window into the VM. Um, and basically there's a program running on the VM that's casting all of the screen uh, frames uh, to a shared memory region. And then when I open up this looking glass program on my host here, I'm, uh, it's, it's reading all of those frames from the VM. So if I wasn't using that kind of like uh, method of switching the mouse back and forth, uh, looking glass does have a nice mouse integration here. So you can see as I hovered over the window, um, it kind of captured my mouse and now it's being used inside the VM. So uh, I also have some hotkeys here so I can press like um, control, I can hold right control key and then press F and it's gonna go ahead and full screen uh, my VM. Uh, but what we actually want here is because I'm using Discord to capture what's going on, I'm actually gonna need to use a special plugin so that you guys get to see the full performance that's going on inside the VM and not this kind of like capture of a capture thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up a looking glass client here on my OBS. And 
Uh, this is that shared memory device that I talked about, where basically everything happening inside the VM is being cast to, um, is being like copied into a shared memory region. And then the Looking Glass program uh, is able to read that and display it to me. The same thing, OBS here has a Looking Glass plugin that's grabbing from that shared memory region. So I've just full screened that to make it a little easier for you to see what's going on inside the VM, but I can just go ahead and use this like any other Windows operating system. So I can start up Steam um, and let's see. I'm also just gonna full screen it for myself. So you're seeing what I'm seeing here. So I can open up my Steam library and then um, it looks like I have some some games that need to be updated, but one of them that I like to play is this kind of like car crash simulator called Beam NG. Um, it has a lot of um, like physics simulation stuff, so it obviously needs GPU acceleration to be able to render everything that's going on inside the VM. Uh, but we'll just go ahead and see if uh, this starts up, and obviously I know it will, but uh, yeah, it's gonna start up and I should be able to drive a car on a game that pretty much only works on Windows, or so far I haven't been able to get it working on Linux. So I'll just go ahead and start a free roam here, and let's maybe pick this track. Maybe the rally track would be more fun. And then kind of same as before, um, I'm just gonna turn off this for a second, uh, just to show you what I'm doing on the host operating system. Same as before, if you wanna be using Discord or any other number of Linux programs while you're gaming here in your VM, you can have your VM open in one window. And then again, I can like open Discord and you can see, um, hopefully we should be able to see uh, my audio still works. So let's go ahead and join one more time. Oh, of a time. Hey guys, one more mic check. How am I doing? I swear to God, if you drop off. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. So you can see um, Discord works. I could uh, either like watch some game that somebody's streaming um, or chat with them, but. Uh, for the purpose of finishing this demo here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, full screen looking glass again uh, and show you that I can uh, drive a car here. So let's give it a second for the game to kind of start up and let this whole scene render. I'm actually not sure if I know the controls uh, for when using, for when I'm using a, uh, for when I'm not using a controller here. Arrow keys? Yeah, okay, so I got arrow keys. I can drive this car. You can see we're getting a pretty reasonable frame rate. Uh, coming out of the game. Let's see if I can get into a kind of catastrophic car wreck here. Okay, so we've wrecked our car. Um, but clearly, we're playing a video game inside a VM, so I'll just go ahead and uh, hide that. And so you can see, uh, yeah, it's, it's playing a Windows exclusive video game here. Um, I can press like, let's see, if I pass my, my uh, mouse and keyboard into the VM, I can kind of use Alt-Tab inside the game and let's go ahead and stop this game. Let's pause right there. At this point in the video, which I'm editing right now, I realized there's something that I kind of glossed over that made this setup seem a little bit too simple that I think will be helpful to elaborate on right now. Okay, so if you see my computer right now, it's in VFIO mode and uh, I have Looking Glass started up and you can see the GPU accelerated uh, VM. So the way this actually works is that I have multiple outputs on the back of my computer here. So I have this display port, which is coming out of the integrated GPU, which is the like kind of display port. And then there's also an HDMI output right here that come out of the motherboard and get the frames that are displayed by 
the integrated GPU. And so that DisplayPort cable is what you're seeing here on my monitor. So it's on like, you can see it says DisplayPort or DP. Then my graphics card is down here and it has a different cable. It has an HDMI cable that's going from this, uh, fr right from the graphics card to, it's also plugged into, um, it's also plugged into my monitor here. So I can switch the monitor to the secondary mode and it's just displaying the graphics coming out of the VM. And the basic, the looking glass setup is essentially there to make it easier than having to switch back and forth. So here I can just do that control F thing and it made the display full screen. So in order for the VM to think uh, it has a monitor and for it to actually use graphics acceleration, you have to have a HDMI port or something plugged into the graphics card. So that's why I also use uh, this dummy plug sometimes and I used it in my laptop video, but you have to have something plugged into the graphics card so that way the VM thinks it has a monitor. And then once it thinks it has a monitor, then you can cast that monitor here to Looking Glass. So I hope that makes it a little bit more clear and dispels some of the confusion about how many ports and cables you have to have. Um, the other piece that I think I wanna add here earlier, I talked about my NVIDIA disable and NVIDIA enable script. Um, they don't work all the time. Sometimes they, most of the time they work, but sometimes they don't and I just get stuck and I go, ah, I'm just gonna reboot my sh machine. So uh, I didn't wanna accidentally portray that this system is perfect and flawless, especially if you end up setting up something similar yourself. But I just wanted to make those points clear. Okay, let's get back to the video. And I can go ahead and shut off my VM. So um, you can see when the VM shut off, Looking Glass also shut itself down. Um, I have this window, which is kind of like the configuration window. The second virtual display for the VM also stopped. Um, and now I have, I'm back to using like a regular working Linux computer. So if I want to play some games again, I can press, I can run my NVIDIA enable command. And once I give it pseudo permission, it's going to reattach my GPU. And then I can go back to either gaming on Linux or maybe I'm writing some AI program that uses my graphics card um, or any of the things that you'd want to be doing on Linux. So I obviously think this is a super powerful configuration. It's enabled me to spend the vast majority of my time in Linux because um, it allows me to kind of have all my hardware um, set up connected to Linux. It's like my microphone and everything works um, and I can use programs like OBS and Steam to play video games. And then for that like small minority of things that I can't do in Linux, I don't have to shut off my computer. I don't have to close my um, close my window manager. I can just open up a VM and uh, connect up and play some game uh, or run some program that only runs on Windows uh, or doesn't run very well on Linux. So I've, I've thought this was a very powerful setup. I've made a lot of videos so far, um, kind of giving tutorials on getting started with the basics. Um, if you want to set up something exactly the same as this, check out that VFIO laptops video um, because it runs through everything that I've gone through here. There's also a link to a blog post which has the actual like um, aliases, uh, but for the purpose of just kind of like showing everything here. Um, so the how's my GPU command will essentially like it uses grep to look in the results of an LSPCI command to essentially see like what is the status of the NVIDIA GPU. Uh, same thing with the Intel graphics. It like looks for the status of that in the command. Um, then the NVIDIA disable command is basically just a bunch of different commands chained together that say um, detach, detach, detach the GPU. And then in the NVIDIA enable command, it's the opposite. It says, go ahead and reattach the GPU, reattach the drivers, and then just kind of like echo out that it's completed successfully. So 
Um, I hope this answers the question that, um, yeah, my VFIO setup in 2024 is still set up, still working. Um, I'm not using single GPU pass through like I, like I did in this video here because um, I've noticed, well, because I have deep GPU, I have two GPUs and because I can get a much more flexible setup when I have, um, when I have two GPUs, I can do some of this like prime render offloading and I can do some of the um, looking glass passing uh, of uh, VM frames into my Linux host. So yeah, I hope this answers the question, where is my VFIO setup right now? And uh, thanks for watching. Stay bland.